if you can tell me what the Espada XL, otherwise known as the Boss, the Tylite 6, the Telwar XL, all have in common in relation to this channel, I will do a video of your choice, time, place, and topic, whatever you like. Please leave your comments down below. Now let's get on with this video. I can't stand intros. Hey, greetings one and all. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time here. If you're thinking of subscribing to my channel, please don't until you look at my playlists. I do a whole lot of different things on this channel outside of tool reviews and tool repairs, etc. Thank you for joining me last Sunday on my little live stream. There was only 10 of us in there. It was perfect. I could re actually read the comments. And by the way, I did solve the Rubik's Cube right after that video. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Cold Steel Luzon in this video. It's not going to be an extensive review. One of the reasons why is there's no stats on the box. It's not very common to see that. Now, I don't know if this is cost-saving measures of the new Cold Steel. Let's just call them Mr. Black. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, this is the second Luzon I've owned over the years, and I do recall the stats were on the other box. Now, please let me know if this is a cost-saving measures because ink is very expensive, but uh, the weight of the ink will probably, you know, weigh down the plane and stuff like that too. So anyway, why did I pick this one up? I sold the original Luzon mainly because it's black. Everything about it is black. It, there is no... There is no stainless anywhere. Now, if you're new to the Luzon game, there's two sizes, a large and a small. This is the large. It's got this uh, plastic pocket clip. And it's got this locking device to keep the uh, liner from accidentally closing. I'm going to go over all that. I'm just doing an overview here. It's got some kind of a bamboo shape. Got some heavy liners going on, massive backspacer, uh, some kind of a plastic, like a grivery or something like that. Um, what else? We got a flipper. We've also got a situation where you can open it out of your pocket on this tab here, perhaps. It does work, actually. Um, I think if they put a little bit of jimping on that, it would have been a little nicer. But again, probably a cost savings thing. Uh, this particular one did not come dead center, but it's not that bad. There is no rubbing in here, so that's okay. I will say, and you're probably going, well, you haven't opened it yet. Well, that's coming. Well, that's coming. Well, that's coming. Uh, you're probably wondering, um, oh, I've I lost my train of thought. Okay, so when I opened this one up, when I first got this knife, I could not open it with the flipper. The detent ball was so embedded in there and there was a little bit of um, a burr, sort of like a volcano on the on the detent hole in the blade. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to talk about a couple of things here before I open because I did take this apart and I made a whole bunch of corrections to make this a much better knife, much more user-friendly. But um, before we open it, I just want to do a couple of size comparisons here. In the closed position, the closest comparable would be the uh, cold steel counterpoint. And I'm going to move this box out of the way as it serves absolutely no purpose at this point. So there you go with the closed. Very, very similar. I would say the Luzon is just a little bit heavier. The width is almost exactly the same. And the thickness is very close as well. Very, yeah, I would say the Luzon is just a little bit heavier. All right, so that's the size in the closed position. Let's bring in one more, uh, maybe two more. Let's throw the uh, Rajah 2 in here. 
and the Rajah 2 is going to be much bigger in the closed position. Much wider, and I would say the thickness is about the same. All right, so let's leave those here for now because we're going to open all these up as well and do a size comparison. So, all right, you've waited long enough. What's going to happen here? There you go. That's the Luzon fully opened in its all blacked outness. It is a wicked shape. There's no doubt about it. The blade is very wicked shape. Big old clip point. I would say it's a three quarter high on the flat with a little fuller on both sides. Some swedge action. Yeah, I would say some piercing capabilities. Very, very acute point. And I don't mean good looking, just acute. I do like the black finish on this one. And of course, it's made in Mr. Black. And the blade steel on this one is HCR 13 MOV. For what this blade is intended for, it's probably good enough. Here is the locking mechanism. And all this does is keeps the liner from closing. So it's a liner lock. How close can we get here? And there's the lockup on that. This particular model, it's about, it's over 50% right now. And if we slide this over or up, it's going to prevent, but there's still some movement. You can see that. So it's not completely rock solid. However, it would have to do a lot of bending in order to close up. Let's see what the, the old fidget factor is happening on this one. This one I believe is running on washers. Let's see if we can't get a closer look. And right, I can see a little bit of brass. Yeah, I don't think this is running on bearings. No. Lefty. It's all good. So, when I first got this, the, there's right there. Okay, the detent hole on the blade there was a burr that formed like a volcano. And because of that burr, it didn't matter how hard I tried flipping it, it would not open. It was extremely painful and very frustrating. So I took it apart and I took my um, stone from the sharp maker and I gently went around to get rid of that burr and it, it opens up like a dream now. Very, very frustrating. And when I took it apart, I also tried to center it in my traditional method, and it did not work on this one, didn't take. And it's got a very satisfying thwack, and the price on this was actually very, very, very low. And I thought, okay, wh why did I get it? Okay, it's black, the price was low. This is the type of knife that you could you know, you could you could put this in your house in a strategic location, perhaps, and um, and just remember that it's there. And if you happen to be in that strategic location, and in a, you know, in a situation, uh, this might come in handy, especially at that price point. Everyday carry, not so much. I'd carry the boss every day before this. Let's do a size comparison with the counterpoint. And let's throw the Raja 2 in there as well. There's a, a few biggins for you. And some of you do not own any of these knives. So I thought I'd bring in the Buck 112 because I know a lot of you who come to this channel have got a Buck 112. So let's put that there on the handle. 
Look at that. The buck 112 is exactly, exactly, I mean, I'm talking exactly the length of the handle, plus or minus an eighth of an inch. How does it look in comparison to the blade? Oh, this will be tricky. Hmm. You see that? I don't know why I did that. There you go. What else can I say about this? HCR, I don't know. It's probably good enough for cutting paper and stuff. What do we got here? We got some paper nearby? Oh, yeah. I did not run this on the sharp maker. Oh, let's try this piece here. I just ran it over the strop a little bit. Now pay attention to the sound. Not bad, right? Not too bad. Cold steel, generally not too bad. Um, the other thing that this particular Luzon has in common with that counterpoint is that both of these knives are from Mr. Black. Well, I'm going to say that that, you can see that the logo here has changed. Same with the logo on that one in comparison to the original Cold Steel. Now, I don't know if they've changed the logo on everything, but the two that I know for sure came from are definitely changed. So I don't know. Who is this knife for? I don't know. I mean, somebody's going to every day carry something like this. I find this to be um, just fun. It kind of makes me smile in a way because, you know, I'm a big sucker for a clip point. For the price, I couldn't say no. And having it around for the, you know, the unexpected surprise mm, might be good. Might be good for that. Will I take this into the woods? Probably not. I mean, I'll take the, the 112 into the woods before I take the Luzon. So, in conclusion, do I like it? It's okay. Am I raving about it? No. Is it something, if you've got a collection of these types of knives, should it be in there? I say yes. I think it should be in there. It's it's earned a spot, I would think. I like the black version. As far as I know, there's many other colors out there as well. I don't work for this company or any of these companies. I'm not trying to sell anything. This is just my take. And little Jerry is basically wondering when we're going to go into the woods again very soon, even though he doesn't technically come with me. So I left you a little surprise at the very beginning of this video. Let's see if anybody actually gets the answer down in the comments. Let me know. Other than that, let's talk real soon. Bye for now.